350 million people living in the country and the wedding photography business <laughs> being probably pretty much recess recession proof, right? I mean, people just continually get married. I think that it's a uh, an ongoing business. I think that people will always be getting married and that there's always work for a photographer. And I think that there is money to be made and there's money to be made as a wedding photographer. There just happens to be a lot of wedding photographers. So the competition is stiff. Hello, this is Peter from Alza Digital. Today I'm interviewing Kristen Jensen about wedding photography. Kristen is a photographer and former fashion model, so she has been on both sides of the camera. Among many other assignments, Kristen shoots weddings on a regular basis and her people skills make her a natural for this kind of situation. What are the most important talents and skills a wedding photographer needs? Yeah, I, I think a really good wedding photographer needs to have exceptional people skills. Because typically on a wedding day there's anywhere from 50 to 300 people that you're really dealing with and taking pictures of. And you have to be able to be able to get along with a lot of different people. You're photographing a lot of different people, but more importantly, you're you're photographing two very important people, the bride and the groom, and it's a highly emotional day. In fact, it's the most probably the most important day of their life. And I think that you have to be able to uh, be very sensitive to that, and and be able to um, be very keen and and uh, adapt to their sensitivity and, and understand their personalities and and be sensitive to them on that day. So you have to have high people skills. Uh, how do you choose uh, besides the obvious people that need to be in the pictures, you know, the wedding party, the bride and the crew, how do you choose who to photograph? Obviously you can probably capture all two or three if it's a big wedding, you can't capture everybody in the picture. And, but you don't want to leave anybody out, so how do you decide that? I, you know, with, when I bring my second shooter along with me, we, we always say during cocktail hour is our, is our, that's our money hour to get just about everybody. Uh, we, we really try to do that, and in fact, when I'm selling a job to a bride and groom, I say that's my time to get everybody I possibly can in your, that's at your wedding on camera. You know, without obviously having food in their mouth, um, but that's when I—that's my—that's my time to get everybody. And I do gravitate towards people that have high energy, and um, that's just the way it is. There, there, there's people that just have high energy, and there's out of a hundred people, there's going to be you know a top fifty that just just sizzle, and I will end up taking more pictures of them. But I do try to uh, make sure that if it is um, you know a hundred people that say at a wedding, that actually every single person is photographed. Maybe not in a, in a close-up shot, but maybe more in a group. If if let's say the energy is doesn't capture for, a, but you, you still have them in a group or or. I still do formal the, portraits. You know, I have a uh, protocol of when I do my formal yeah. portraits. But um, what I really love to do are candids, and I love to go right. around like during cocktail hour, or even the reception. Yeah. You know, with a really long lens and and just shoot candids, and it's challenging to me because candids are really tough to yeah. get because it's really difficult to get a really great face on a candid. Because you don't and, want them to notice you, right? Right. I don't want them to notice me, which sometimes they do, and it's hard to be standing in a crowd with a big long lens and try to be... It's hard sort of, not to notice you. Right. Um, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm almost six feet, so I guess I kind of stick out. But, um, yeah, it's it's tough and it's tricky, but it's, it's so great. It's so wonderful when I can capture candids that are really spot on. That's really exciting. What are the best community associations, organizations, or networks uh, to help you get uh, regular work as a wedding photographer? You know, there's a lot of communities for wedding photographers, and I'm not saying that you would get direct work from them, but, um, but they're amazing associations for wedding photographers, such as WPPI, which is an amazing organization, and they have a huge conference in Las Vegas every March. Um, that I highly recommend. And I'm also a member of PPA, which is um, a giant um, association for photographers. It has amazing benefits. And there's local PPA chapters across the country that you can join 
that have a lot of uh, wedding chapters within them that have a ton of information for photographers. There's also um, Pictage, which is um, a company that I work with that hosts all my uh, wedding images that have pug meetings, they call them pug meetings, that are spotted throughout the United States and are um, meetings that take place like once a month and it's all the best wedding photographers in that particular area. They get together and collaborate and talk about better ideas, better ways of shooting, better ways of getting clients and they share clients and, and it's just it's a really great community and something wonderful for the aspiring photographer to be with, for well-known photographers to be with and just to be able to collaborate and have that camaraderie. Um, I would highly recommend that. So this is a business-to-business -business, uh, relationship, really. Now, how about uh, the clients? How, how would the client find you? you know, obviously, uh, uh, being the, the wedding party, they would probably not go to these organizations, but how would they find you as a wedding photographer? Do you are uh, any sites, or do you go to the web venues? Or I would say the clients find me several different ways, yeah. and the best way is through referral obviously through somebody who was very happy that I photographed their wedding and it would be from a bride who's referring me. That's number one, number one way. Number two, in this very, very big way that I get my referrals is through the vendor. Vendor being the place where the bride and groom got married. So it could be a place, let's just say, we call it the inn. So the inn is where they got married. And um, the, the way that I get a referral from someone like at the inn is that I after the wedding is over, I go back and I bring pictures of the venue, of all the tabletops, of how beautiful the place looked, of the exterior, the interior, and I bring it back to the manager at the end and show those pictures and give them to them. And in return, they show those pictures to all these, the, the people coming in to maybe wanting to book their venue. Yeah. And people ask, hey, who shot those? And they say, Kristen Jensen shot those, and boom. I get a referral, so it's a it's a really wonderful way to get a direct beeline referral is to for a photographer to make friends with their uh, vendors in their local area. It's a really wonderful way to get uh, business. What type of cameras do you use, and in which mode? I um, I was sponsored by Panasonic about 24 months ago, so I made a huge leap. A huge jump from my heavy Canon <laughs> DSLR cameras to my beautiful mirrorless GH3 and GH4 camera and um, it was an adjustment but I tell you I've, I'm never never gonna look back I love it so when I go to a wedding I um, primarily shoot with my new GH4 mirrorless and it shoots in 4k video and I bring my GH3 as a backup I have probably 12 lenses, but I shoot with two of my favorites, and um, I've never been happier. I shoot in manual mode. I've always shot in manual, manual mode. Yeah. Yeah. Do you change lenses on the job? I usually don't because I carry a bunch of cameras around my neck. <laughs> I'm, when I'm shooting a wedding, it's just too fast. You don't have time to change yeah. the lens. So what I do is I bring, I bring three cameras, or even four. And the beauty of having a mirrorless camera is that they're not heavy, and I can do that. Yeah. So I have two GX7s, a GH3 and a GH4, and I usually have, you know, all of them are rigged with different lenses, and so I can just pick them up and go and, and shoot what I need to do yeah. and, and not change. It's too, you, when you're shooting weddings, you really can't change your lens. Yeah. You, you, you just have no time. You missed your shot. There's yeah. just no way you can do it, and that's why you really need to have a lot of gear and have your gear ready to go. It's, your gear is just mandatory. You've got to have really good gear um, and know it well. Yeah. So in reality, how, how does it look? You, you have three or four cameras hanging <laughs> on your shoulder or you have them in a bag or how do you I mean, typically I have, my two, I have my two main cameras, mm -hmm. which is the G3, GH3 and the GH4, and then I have two GX7s um, with fixed lenses mm -hmm. on them. So it, it's just, they're light. Yeah. You know, I can do that with that system, so I'm pretty fortunate. Do you use an assistant for wedding photography jobs? I usually don't use an assistant, but I do book a second shooter. And a second shooter meaning that they are actually shooting. They're, they are being a second photographer. 
And when I go out and when we start our day, and when I go to the bride's house or hotel or wherever she is getting ready, that second photographer who's working for me is at the groom's house or hotel and photographing him and his family. So we're both working at the same time. Our cameras are timed exactly at the same timing and we're documenting the, the wedding exactly at the same time. And his or her project is on the groom for the day. And my project is on the, on, on the bride. And that's kind of how we play out our day. Meanwhile, we're obviously covering the whole entire event, but that's sort of how we play it. But they are literally covering every single thing that I cannot. Um, so the, what about uh, carrying gear around? So you, because you say you don't use an assistant. You know, when I first started shooting weddings 12 years ago, I carried a lot of gear. And there was a lot more gear to carry. I mean, I had a bag that was huge and, and lighting and all kinds of stuff. But with everything, modern technology and the cameras being lighter and everything, I have a fanny pack and carry everything on me. So I really don't need an assistant and I don't need anybody to carry my stuff. Not for wedding photography. You know, it's different if it was a, a shoot and we're going into a studio and someone's carrying lighting yeah. and things like that. But no, I, I don't need an assistant for, for wedding photography, but I do need a second shooter. How important is uh, production work or post-production work, you know, including the sorting to the pictures, the, the binding of the album, maybe posting pictures to the web? Or in other words, how much time actually does it, does it take up compared to the preparation and the actual shoot of the wedding? It takes up most of your life to do post-production. <laughs> it is literally, absolutely mind-boggling how much time it takes. And this is where I think people don't really realize the work for a wedding photographer. And I don't think clients realize that, why the fee is so high. It's not really the day. The day of the shoot is fun. You're moving fast and you're shooting and you're just, think time's flying because you're just you know, you're high on adrenaline, yeah. just fast, you know, everything's fast paced and you're shooting and woohoo, this is great. Then you get back to your studio and you've got thousands of pictures if, you, if, you've, if you're trigger happy, <laughs> like I am, and then you have another photographer who's shooting, so you've got, you know, usually, you know, if it's a 200 guest wedding, you could have two or 3,000 pictures very easily. And you've got to go through those and edit it and get it down to a reasonable number, which I would say if, if you have that about a number, I'd like to get it down to about 700. <laughs> really tight and perfect. And that takes uninterrupted eight hours. And I mean uninterrupted. No breaks, nothing. Eight hours. So. And when we're talking about thousands of pictures, it is you or maybe your assistant looking at the pictures. There's, there's no program out there right, that could do that for you. It's, it's, yeah. it's me yeah. or I have one person that I've trained that I've had the last five years or, or this one gal that I have doing it. It's her. Yeah. And that's it. And it's mostly me because it's hard to have other people edit your work. Right. Um, but busy studios have to farm it out because there's no way you'd be able to sit and edit it. It's, it's impossible. It's, it's, because if you're shooting one or two weddings a weekend, there's no way you could catch up. There's, yeah. It'd be impossible. But the editing is, is, is grueling and it's tough. And there is a system I have and um, I have it down pat the way that I do it. But it's, it's very time consuming. And then you have the album you know, to make for the client as well, which is time consuming. So I, what I did was I actually put together a timesheet of how long it's, I spend with each client. And what I realized I spend average with an album included from the time I meet the client until I hand them their album is 60 hours. So it's 60 hours per client. It's not go and shoot the wedding for five hours. So when you, when you factor all these things in, it's a lot, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a lot of work. In terms of bride and groom, when you tell them how much it's going to cost roughly, you know, is it usually they, they expected that or are they uh, kind of baffled that, is, that it's too high, more than they expected? You know, hopefully when people come to me 
they're already pre-screened somewhat and that they're not too devastated about the price. Uh, but some people do get sticker shock and then I know they're probably not the right people for me. Uh, just because it's just, just not going to work out if I have to explain it that much. Yeah. Uh, they're just probably not the right client for me. Now, can you tell us uh, about a, a moment or a particular situation or you know, in general that, that stands out from your experience as a wedding photographer? I'm sure you probably have many, but you know, just maybe one or two, something that uh, it's memorable. I have a, uh, I have bridezillas, you know, and I'm sure other wedding <laughs> everybody, every wedding photographer has a bridezilla, and I have groomzillas too. I mean, they're, they're, there's like groomzillas, but I had a groom, um, it was a daytime wedding. Daytime weddings typically people don't usually drink that much. It's usually mellow and it's not, partying is not so, so great. So the dancing, people are kind of more subdued. But there was this guy, groom, got married and he really had a lot to drink. And it was like a Sunday afternoon and it was towards the end of the reception and it was around four o'clock and he kept just twirling his ring just couldn't, you know, just one of these guys that just couldn't believe he was married, you know, geez, you know, what, what's up with this? And he kept twirling it, and then he was just throwing it up in the air and catching it with his hand like this and throwing it up in the air and catching it with his hand. And then he, he th threw it all the way up in the air and he caught it with his tooth. And everybody was clapping and, uh, ooh, yay, 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 yay. And then he did it again. And this time he caught it with his tooth, but it, it fell down his throat and he swallowed it. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he swallowed his wedding ring on his wedding day, okay? <laughs> and and we went to the hospital, okay? And there is a x-ray of his stomach with a wedding ring in it, in his rib cage. It was so gross. Did you include that in the wedding album? It was album? in the wedding album. They put it in the yeah. wedding album. But uh, yeah, that was pretty, that kind of took the cake, so to speak. And that was, that was pretty amazing. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would also like to mention Kristen's book, How to Start a Home-Based Wedding Photography Business. It's an awesome book full of valuable information covering all aspects of wedding photography. It's available on Amazon.com.